G'day guys, it's Jara here and welcome to Seduce Me The Autumn Otome? I'm still not 100% sure how to say that <clears throat> My voice is so weird this morning Let's play so let's do this one because it's yeah it's just different save files right. oh I have to remember voices now no well it's time to head back home I'll cook you up your favorite lasagna when we get home okay it's more or less how I remember thanks mum however my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him, but after his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Gathering my courage, I decided that it was time to talk. Dad? Go could ahead. I ask you something? Why do you want me mo to move into the estate I so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? Hmm. Right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. Yeah, but is it what I want or what you want? But it's so sudden. You just decided so quickly right after uh, the funeral. Don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. Jeez, calm down, pops. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. In reply, uh, in reply, my father rubbed his temple inside. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? Yes, but is it what I want or what you want? But... Stop what mumbling! If... Hmm. But what if I don't, don't want to work there? be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. Hmm. He came closer to me. His face it's softened. All for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. Something tells me I'm not going to. For some reason, when I heard him say that, something suddenly snapped at me. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but... It made me feel so angry. Do you even care that grandfather passed I away? Do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things Excuse couldn't be me? better. I don't like your tone, young lady. It's like nothing ever happened at all. Like you just ignore the fact that he's do no longer not here. Raise your voice at me. What did he ever do to you to deserve this? My father, his face hardened, crossed his arms and erupted in an angry you laughter. Sure place him upon a pedestal, like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. He's my grandfather. I'm always going to respect him and look up to him. Is that it? Are you happy seeing grandfather dead, six feet underground? Well, enjoy yourself because it's later than you think. Where everyone was grieving, you were holding yourself back from laughter in everyone's faces. Did you feel just a bit happy seeing him lie in the graveyard? A flash of rage crossed his face, and he whipped he whipped that back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on, when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut! never hit 
a child. You never hit you anyone. You did not know my father. You did not know what he was capable of. Doesn't mean you hit me. Is everything all right? What happened? Nothing. I'm not hungry. I think I'll go upstairs. I quickly turned and ran up to the stairs in my bedroom, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in short pants. For a while, I just leaned against the door to my bedroom. Everything eventually sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheeks still throbbed, and I attentively stood up and looked at the mirror to see how it looked. Hopefully it doesn't bruise. <laughs> what am I saying? Tears form in the corner of my eyes, but I blink them back rapidly. I couldn't cry for a second time today. I had to be stronger than that. Right. Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. I'm fine, just so lost my appetite. Day, and I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? Yeah, don't worry about me, Mum. I'll come down later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. I just I just don't want to eat right now, alright, Mum? Tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. Uh, because your husband just slapped me? Hmm. I wanted to tell her. Part of me wanted to scream to tell her what Dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving out regardless. I remained silent, letting the event remain in the past. I'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later. Thanks, Mum. Finally, my mum left me alone. It was strange to think that she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. I really didn't know what to do. I needed to do something, anything, to get my mind off of what just happened. Anything would be better than thinking about any more about the pain still radiating from my cheek. I was probably going to move into my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so I'd be prepared for tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good idea, right? I guess I should start packing. I opened the closet, rummaged around for a while before I finally find two large bags. Pulling them out onto the floor of my room. I then began to empty my drawers and cabinets so I could bring all my things with me. I didn't have much to bring, other than just clothes and toiletries. It's kind of bizarre that I didn't have many personal belongings. It wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them, but I certainly didn't have many things in my room that I would miss if I suddenly just left the house. I shook my head to rid myself of those thoughts. If I were going to be my new home, it would have to feel like it. One way or another, I was going to make it home. Just as my pack my things, my cell phone begins to ring and vibrate in my pocket. I slid my phone out on my pocket and answered it while slowly easing myself into the bed. Who could possibly be call yeah. possibly could be calling? Is that oh, sugar. Right? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. Oh. Hello. Mm. I'm really glad you guys called. My what voice happened? managed to come out, but there okay? only a whisper. Well. So I began to tell them about the funeral that afternoon. A small silence followed when I was done recounting what happened, and to my relief, Naomi finally spoke up. No, it's okay. My dad isn't in a good mood, so we could just keep talking on the of phone course. like this. We stay on the phone until the crack of dawn, right, Suzu? Yeah, we're always here if you need us. After all. Best friends. Trio without you, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like the name of a gang. Yo, what up? It's the triple threat trio. What up? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. I mean, we're all taking on the world together. We've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. What's with you? Exactly. Me? You've got to step up your game, It's Naomi. cool. Pulling behind the cool kids like Anderson and me. Tsk, tsk. Hey! Tsk, tsk. I'm a cool kid. <laughs> if anything, I say you have to step up your game. Hmm. 
We chatted cheerfully about all sorts of things. Very soon I'd forgotten about the event that today was engaged in the conversation about Naomi's favourite TV show. Some program called Herlock. Like a spin-off of Sherlock. We all agreed that the actor playing the titular character certainly had a very distinct look about him, with that long overcoat and scarf wrapped around his neck. We had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. <laughs> yeah, he has really high cheekbones and his eyes are so pretty. Though I do have to say I prefer <laughs> Jackson. As a bonus, his actor is just so sassy. Like Watson. I look around the clock hanging on the wall and realize how late it is. Whoa, it's already 1am. Sorry if you're keeping you guys up so late. I think I'm going to hit the hay for tonight. See you guys at school tomorrow? Well, today, because 1am is the morning, so you would say today, but sure? Question mark? I probably should shower before I go to bed. I can't believe I stayed up this late just talking to my friends. Yo, lasagna! But it was really nice. Well, I have to go to the bathroom. I took a relaxing shower. Nothing beats hot water and the feeling of being clean. After drying myself, I promptly dress in my pajamas and crawl into bed. A nice hot shower after a long day. I'm so glad I finally get to go to bed. Here she knows. I had had a really long day. I knew that I wasn't that I was wishing for something to change back in class, but I certainly wasn't expecting any of those things that happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Ugh. I curled up on my side, tightly wrapped around the blanket around me. I really wasn't in the mood to return to school, but my dad probably would make me go just for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I reached out to my lamp on my nightstand and turned off the light. However, my mind was so lost in the passing of my grandfather and the thought in parenting something so big that it haunted my mind the entire night until the next morning. Mm. I shook my head and tried to clear the sleepiness out to my note at Ville. I really didn't get any sleep last night. It's really time to wake up. Mm, wait, school? Ugh. As soon as I realized I had to go to school, I slammed my bed and looked to the vanity mirror. That's a relief. Luckily, it was barely a bruise on my cheek. You had to squint to actually see it. I doubt anyone would actually notice it unless they leaned in really close. Breathing out a sigh, I got dressed, took my backpack, and caught the bus to go to school. It wasn't even an hour before everyone had heard the news. I was approached in school and given condolences for my loss. However, that wasn't what shocked Wait, my friends. So you have the whole Anderson house to yourself? Lucky as hell, man! <clears throat> Quit being so sensitive, yeah, we're... Naomi. Quit being so vulgar, Suzu. Ah... Uh... Sensitive, uh, I, I don't oh, man. Come on! See? She knows about proper public taste. I know how to be a lady. Sheesh. Yeah, but the house I don't care about. Guys, I'm going there after school today because my parents want me to get used to living there. It hasn't there. even been a day since you came back to school. Yep. I know, but my parents want me to try and live there as soon as possible. Fast. Are you going to be okay? No. Of course. <laughs> but even in the comfort of my best friends, life seems to keep testing me. Hey! Don't Ooh. go around shoving people like that. Whoops. Did I strike a nerve, Capini? Who are you? She let out a small laugh. <laughs> As she twirled her hair around her finger, Lisette, one of the last it's people I wanted to see today. To be apologizing to. Oh, Anderson. Hey, how's it going? I'm uh, all right. Haven't you already heard, Lizette? Of what? Her grandfather's passing. Oh, mm. Ah, well, I'm um, sorry about that. I don't really watch a lot of news. It doesn't really sound like you. I mean can tell. It. I do mean it, earnestly. Why wouldn't I? Typical. Because you hate me. Isn't her family involved with the mafia or something? I wouldn't be surprised if she brought out the bat from behind her back right this moment. What? I nearly forgot the crowd that followed Lisette, which was mostly comprised of the people that no one wanted to see on a typical school day. No one had the slightest idea why exactly they followed Lisette around, but they labelled themselves as social equals of her. Suzu comes from an honest family. 
says the one whose family profits from political scandals. Yeah, your dad doesn't make anything unless he's in the courts with dirty politicians. Shut up! Hey, let's all calm down for a second, alright? I'm sure Anderson needs some time to recuperate. I mean, what just happened? We need to give her some respect. Really? What lie are you about to come up with in a second? Hmm? Just stop. Stop acting like that already. Hmm? Like you feel sorry for me. What are you talking about? I'm sure you're happy seeing me like this. You already have everything you've wanted now seeing me like this. Life can get any better. Bitterness seeped into me. Words started flying in my mouth without filter. But honestly, I didn't care. I was so consumed by anger that I only saw the set in front of me. What exactly am I to you? Just another part of your obstacle course? Is that exactly what I am? I'm sick of it, Lisette. I'm sick of all these charades. I'm sick of you. Gas rose from the crowd around him. I was brought back to school ha hallway. Even my friends beside me looked surprised. One girl looked like she was going to speak, but Lisette held her hand up to stop her. There was an emotion in her face that I couldn't quite make out, but I could see a form of pity in her eyes. Don't you dare pity me. I looked away from her. I didn't want to see the emotion in her eyes when she was talking to me. I'm she didn't sorry. have the right to look at me. I know your grandfather passing away must have really taken a toll on your emotions. It has, and my parents are shit. Hmm. She smiled towards me and put her hand on my shoulder, giving me a tiny smile, as if for old times' sake. But for some reason, I didn't feel comforted at all. Not that I was just angry at her, but the expression on her face when she leaned in closer to me controlled into something complex. Something was different about her. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but something about her had definitely changed. Well, I'll be going for now. Track meet responsibilities and all of that stuff. See you later. Something about Lizette made me feel uncomfortable. I wasn't just angry, but also uneasy. What was it? I've never seen her like that before. But I decided to pay no further attention to it. She continued riding down the hallway with the gaggle of her friends behind her. I refocused my attention on Miss Phillips, who was walking down the hallway towards me. Nothing we couldn't handle. No. Just a bunch of snobs. Suzu, hush! It was nothing, Mrs. Phillips. I see. Ah, uh, Suzy, well, man. Anderson, please accept my condolences for your loss. Can everyone stop? Your grandfather. Thank was you, Miss Phillips. Man. He really upheld the philanthropy of his company's policies and the money that went towards charity too. What? I know. He was amazing. I really looked up to him, and well, I wanted to be I as good as he was. I know great as your grandfather. Hell yeah, she will. She'll be ten times better than her grandfather. Thanks. Would I, would I really be better than my grandfather? Everyone seemed to have high expectations of me. I wanted to do my best and make my family proud, but to be better than my grandfather? I wasn't sure about that. From outside the school window, I saw a familiar blue car pull up to the curb. Dally was my father in the driver's seat. Oh, my ride's here. Well, I guess I'll see Want you both to tomorrow. You? Oh, no. It's okay. It'll be fine. See you? Well, I sh they should have came. Hey. Hey, Dad. As I got in the car, I noticed my father looked troubled. Clutching at the his steering wheel and staring straight ahead as if Thought something was really bothering yesterday. him. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Does your cheek still hurt? No, it's it's nothing to worry about. I mean it. I shouldn't have laid a finger on you. You know that you're my most precious Good. daughter. You're all that I have. I'm your only daughter. I... Mm. Yeah, he couldn't bring himself to say what he's never said to me for such a long time. I've always wanted to hear those words to affirm how he really felt, but I guess even now he couldn't say it to me. Trust me. Jar, Jar in game, hear me out, sister, right? Males who are like fathers, so father figures and stuff, I swear, find it difficult to say I love you. It's. I think they just find it the most hardest thing to do in the world. Because to them, they're showing it, they don't have to say it. So they don't connect in their head that sometimes we just want to hear those words instead of seeing the actions done. I turned my head away to look out the window. There was no point in waiting for something that was never going to come. And like that, he started to drive and the conversation between us ended. I decided to focus my attention on the passing scenery. 
We were taking the usual route to Grandfather's house. It was located within the vicinity of the school district, but it was still pretty far from the school and from where our house was. We always lived alone. He had always lived alone. He insisted on doing things by himself, even at his age living in such a large house. I wondered, did he pass away with no one at his side as well? It sounds so lonely and sad. It was anything that he could decide on living all alone in that large estate. If anything, he could have lived with us. Though, he and my father probably would have given each other the silent treatment the entire time. Maybe living alone was preferable to that. I actually had visited him for quite a while. Visits to his house were most frequent when I was a child, and I had grown up long since then. The last time I visited, though, he looked just as happy. He looked as usual. As he usually was. Happy and healthy. But things change. In the back of my mind, I've been chasing this all time. And I couldn't see the mouse, it was me. And no one had me cry. I knew that he would have to leave one day. It wasn't like humans could live forever. So why did my heart feel so heavy? The car ride was How mostly spent in silence until he spoke again. Your grades, I hope. Uh, yeah. Try I'm trying my best so far. That's not really doing the best you can, is it? <sighs> With my father, only some words I said were filtered through his ears. It was difficult to keep up with the conversation without eventually taking, talking about academics or my future, even if it was something loosely based on it. He always found a anyway, way to integrate it whenever we talked. In the trunk. There isn't a lot, so I'm sure you can manage bringing them inside the house. After all, you are on the road to being independent now. Yeah, I guess I can manage my own. The usual silence resumed between us. I really wasn't sure what to say around him, especially when... Most of the time, we didn't share the same opinion. One question did linger in my mind, though. If he was going to just justify acting so nonchalant at a grandfather's funeral, I had the right to at least know why. Dragon. So, say, so Dad. We are not talking. Are you and Grandpa. I feel like we should be because Grandfather just le left, left us. Before that. I do not want to hear it, and that is the end of this conversation. As always, he manages to shut down any other form of conversation related to him. It's just like what happened last night. I opened my mouth slightly, but I closed it again. It was like talking to a brick wall. It wasn't like I could find out anything, but somehow arguing my way through it. Alright then. I leaned against the car door and stared out the window. I really couldn't think. What would this place be like? It had been to my grandfather's house before, but it was once one thing visiting and it was another actually living here. How would I manage living on my own without any training to really care for a house? I knew the natural I knew that naturally the bills would be paid by my parents when to grandfather stopped the corporation and never lived independently before. Thinking about it made me feel like some kind of bird being pushed out of a nest. Though I was technically an adult, I felt unprepared and a bit daunted at the prospect of actually moving into a new place. Most people my age would be ecstatic moving out. After all, it would symbolize some kind of change in their lives, like being on the road to independence. But I felt none of the sort. I really hope I wouldn't let my parents down. I wouldn't want to let grandfather down. What would he be saying right now? I gaze up I gaze up at the passing clouds in the sky. If you're out there, grandpa how would you be doing? Or would you, would there be anything you want to tell me at this moment? And of course, and I'll answer. What was I doing? Searching for answers in the heavens that wouldn't, I would not exist. I ducked my head to stare at the blur of trees and cars from the car window. My head was definitely going into the clouds there at a moment. Either way, I found myself being driven off to my new home. Whoa. That's a big home. I've always wanted a balcony. I just put pillows on there and blankets and lie and watch the stars at night. It'd be pretty cool. The Here car rolled to a stop and I drift out my thoughts. Alright. All right. Come on, my lover. I love you, Dad. No, make sure to come by and visit us often. No, I'm going to miss you lots. 
I think another link stair. I paused a bit before reaching the car door handle, waiting for any form of goodbye, but he didn't speak again. I sighed and exited the car. Hearing my dad pop open the trunk, I saw the two large bags I packed last night. They were large enough to carry only the things I needed. I took them out and placed one bag on each shoulder, closed the trunk. He then drove off. Leaving me alone in front of the mansion, I watched the blue car fade in the distance of the road before turning to see my new home. This is huge. My grandfather gave me this? It's hard to believe. The house was framed by a set of tall gates. I hesitated before. I hesitantly pushed them aside to take in the entire estate. The house still looked like it was when I last visited him. At a glance, it seemed kind of intimidating with its size, though if I came closer, it was clear that there was more to it than that. The brick walls were framed by shrubbery and lovely flowers, giving it a homely and welcoming look. But in con contrast, the tall doors into the house gave me the feeling of grandeur. Who knew what was waiting for me? But I wouldn't back down at this moment. I took out the key from the front door and unlocked them. Well, I might as well make myself a home. I'll be staying here for quite a while anyways. That's when I saw them. And with that, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below and tell me. And that's when I saw them. Who was them? Time will tell. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. See ya. I wonder who's waiting for me behind the doors. Yeah.